Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum dear viewers and welcome to another episode of Her Thoughts here on Imam Hussein TV where today we are talking about the topic of jihad al-nafs. Jihad against one's inner soul, one's inner shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran tells us by the soul and by him who made it perfect and then inspired to understand what is wrong and what is right for it. Truly is successful the one who purifies his soul. Dear, uh, dear viewers, I'm welcomed by my sisters again. Sisters, assalamu alaikum. So, sisters, we know that uh, jihad al akbar, which is the jihad against one's inner soul, one's inner nafs, is referred to as the bigger jihad, jihad al akbar. And the jihad that takes place on the battlefield um, in holy war is often referred to as jihad al asghar, or the lesser jihad, or the smaller jihad. But what does this actually mean? And what significance does this have, particularly in this holy month of Mahi Ramadan that we are in? And how can we as, as human beings um, control our nafs, control our inner soul in order to better ourselves, especially to try and purify ourselves in this holy month? Yeah, so jihad and nafs is, each one of us has mm -hmm. divine powers within us. There is one divine power which is pushing us um, towards doing good and then we have another power which is pushing us towards doing something bad and literally jihad and nefs is a battlefield within yes. ourselves yes. inside of us each of each one of us has a battlefield in, happening inside mm. and um, sometimes you hear that within thoughts sometimes you hear that within your own desires there is lust there is anger there is even sometimes as a simple thing as giving charity when yes. you go to give charity you'll hear that other pull mm. in a shaitan which, uh, yeah yes. that would push you towards saying you know no, you know save money for yourself mm. you probably need this money so there's always a battlefield battlefield um happening inside of us and i think the reference to a battlefield is so beautiful because in a battlefield sometimes you fall and sometimes you get up yes. and that happens within us sometimes yes. we may fall at a certain hurdle and sometimes we will get up mm. so especially in this holy month of Ramadan I think it's especially important because we are um, it is a battlefield that is kind of restricting yourself from food and we mm. feel that restrictions and we, we are training the soul in that aspect but we're also training the soul in other areas such as our character, our yes. actions, our words, the way we interact with others. Mm -hmm. So especially in the Holy Month of Ramadan, I think it is a really a period where we train the soul. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think many people that may feel difficult in that battlefield within themselves in many areas or different areas, um, in the Holy Month of Ramadan, they can really train the soul mm -hmm. and make it stronger in, inshallah, overcoming and becoming successful in that uh, jihad and nafs yeah. that they may struggle with. Because we know that um, fasting, you have the different levels of fasting. So exactly. you, one is just the simple refraining from food and water. Then you have the fasting of the whole body, so with your eyes, your ears, your mouth. Um, and then you have the, the greater level of fasting, which is fasting with your mind, trying to control your inner yes. thoughts. Um, and there's a very beautiful hadith um, by the sixth Imam where he was once talking to his companions and he was quoting this from the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he said that Prophet Muhammad said to his companions when they came back from holy war, and he said, blessings be upon those people who have accomplished the lesser jihad, yes. but still have the greater jihad. And upon that, his companions, Prophet Muhammad's companions said to him, uh, oh, oh dear Prophet, what do you mean by the greater jihad? And to that, um, our beloved Prophet replied, the greater jihad is the one against the nafs, against the ones in a soul. And actually it has a type of chain effect. It has almost like a ripple effect. So if you try and purify yourself, um, you can almost help others around you as well. They can learn from you. So in essence, Ramadan, like you said, Zahra, is um, it's a test for everyone, you know, under any normal circumstances. But when you have Ramadan um, with COVID, it's almost like that jihad of the nafs multiplies. And how do we um, fight that inner voice? How do we refrain that in a voice of shaitan um, to make ourselves better, to purify ourselves in this holy month of Mahi Ramadan. I think one important thing to realise is you you can't fight anything unless you know what you're up against. Mm. And so it's so important to reflect on yourself. And there's so much emphasis on this. You know, we have a hadith from, from the Imam, so they say, Laysa minna man lam yuhasib nafsu fi kulli yom. So he's not from us. 
he who does not take account of his soul every single day. Yes. Which just goes to show that this is an expectation mm. that they have of us um, to, to be able to look at ourselves and critique ourselves. And that's one thing that we all struggle with because essentially we are controlled by our egos. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, this is the one point mm -hmm. I would make is before even thinking about, you know, how am I going to become a better person this Ramadan, it's important to first actually know where we're struggling. That's a really important point that you've made. Um, so actually, take, I, you know, take a bit of time out in the, in the day. Ponder upon what it is that you need to improve. And like you said, Zahra, there could be so many things. Mm -hmm. It may be the simple things like losing your temper, losing yes. your patience. It could be struggling to wake up for Fajr namaz, uh, praying namaz very late, um, having a habit of lying, backbiting, listening to music. There are so many things, there's so many inner battles that everybody has on an individual level. And then take that time out during the day to ponder upon it and then try and set small targets to try and improve yourself. So maybe, you know, set a target of a day and yeah. then increase it by three, four days, five, six days. And then the, you might realize that after a month, um, and this holy month of Ramadan is what better time yes. than to do it. And after that month, you may realize that actually this is now a habit. Mm -hmm. And something which I find really useful is trying to do istighfar as much as I can. So for me, I, I love the tasbih, la ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min mm. which is the tasbih that Prophet Yunus recited when he was trapped in the darkness of the belly of the whale. So mm -hmm. in essence, I'm saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are the greatest and I am the wrongdoer, I am the yeah. sinner. And actually, you know, think to yourself, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi la There is no power greater than Allah. Hasbun Allahu wa na'mal wakil. Allah is the supreme guide and the judge of everything. And I try and recite um, Ayatul Kursi as much as I can because we know that Ayatul Kursi in essence gives you like a barrier and a protection um, from shaitan and it helps me to focus. And also something which I also find quite useful is trying to do wudu. Mm. as much as I can so not just you know we know that doing wudu before you go to sleep or when you leave the house um, has its benefits but I try I, I feel that trying in that trying to stay in that purified state as much as you can um, because Islam has so much emphasis emphasis on taharat of the body but taharat of the soul is also so important yeah, yeah. subhanAllah um, I just want to go back to the point that you made about um, fasting in Ramadan and uh, that training you to do yeah. the jihad and nefes and training you not to listen to everything your, your inner self tells you. Uh, SubhanAllah, you know, Allah has said in the Quran that fasting has been brought to you as a prescription. Yeah. So it's actually been prescribed to us because Allah wants to teach us, He wants to train us how to be able to control ourselves, yeah. how to be able to control our souls because He knows, He's created us, mm -hmm. He knows us more than anyone else and He knows that sometimes we can get weak. So by training ourselves and fasting for sometimes 18 hours mm, yes and being able to do that that's that's a really big deal no, and a lot of people ask us say how how do you how do you muslims do that mm. but it's about training your soul training your it's mind, mind when you matter. wake up that morning and you say i'm fasting today subhanallah you don't even feel hungry yeah. it's like in ramadan something happens and you don't even feel that hunger yeah i think that's a very important point because the quran as you mentioned always talks about the spiritual benefits it's prescribed yeah and even fatima zahra in her khutbah and mm. uh, the khutbah of fedek when she talks about the different laws and different aspects of salah sayyam um, when she talks about sayyam she talks about fasting she talks about the spiritual benefit is being prescribed for and she talks about the spiritual aspect and this holy month is i think is the month where we really need to perfect that and going back to what zahira said um i think it's very important that people really begin to account for their their own self i know my flaws and sometimes yes. people don't know my um their flaws each one of us we know where we're lacking and we know we know where we're strong at mm. and i think um, we need to account ourselves before we're accounted by the Lord mm. on the Day of Judgment, you know. Um, we need to sit there and really account for our own flaws, our own shortcomings. There may be flaws that no one sees that we know yes. within ourselves is present. And this is a month where we really try to kind of, um, how do you say, shine the iron? I don't know. What iron out the creases. Iron yeah. the creases, there we go, that's one saying. <laughs> um, so we really need to begin to do yeah. that. And I really feel like this is the training ground to set yes. us for the yes. rest of the year. If we are able to really 
begin this year and end this month, let's say begin this month and end this mm. month in a really strong high, then we are probably able to take that until next year mm. where we then re, um, re, re-energize and we really yeah. boost the structure. Yeah. 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 Something else that I realized actually is, I know in the last episode I mentioned that you know the Islamic calendar is so strategically planned. Yeah. It's almost like Allah has given us you know, the first 19 days where we're kind of getting used to the fast and you're kind of, initially the first few days you might think, oh, lunch, oh no, hang on, there's no lunch today, there's no breakfast today. But by the time you get to, say, day, you know, 15, 16, 17, um, you're not really thinking about the food and you're a bit more conscious and aware of what you're doing. And it's almost like Allah's preparing us for the climax, which is Layal al Qadr, where that's when I'm going to say, okay, look, I did this and I've been doing this and I've been doing this and I need to be forgiven before I can move on. Yes. Um, so I think it's important to kind of have a look at the bigger picture before before the month, ideally, mm. which is why we have Rajam and Shaban, yeah. um, but to prepare mentally and psychologically for, for the month ahead. Yeah, I and mean, subhanAllah, Allah. you know, Allah's given us 30 days of fasting mm. and 30 days of pondering and 30 days of self-reflecting. And inshallah, after those 30 days, we've formed a habit and um, we've contemplated, like you said, on your individual jihad that every person goes through like you said it's like a tug of war yeah. between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing you towards him yes. and shaitan taking yes. you away and it could be something simple as charity where you think okay I'm going to give this amount of charity and then shaitan's like no that's too much yeah. don't give that and you know that shaitan irritating you and putting thoughts into your head yeah. um, which brings us very beautifully to the letter of today so um, we have an anonymous um, viewer who's written in to us um, where they say, Assalamu alaikum. For many years, I've had many inner wars with myself about things I would love to do that I know is haram or something that I have done that is haram, like missing out on some of my fast during my Ramadan and not making up for it later on. These things tend to eat me up. And although I do work to try and better myself or avoid the temptation of the dunya, I find it very difficult to make a permanent change. Can you please help me find a way to overcome this? Yeah. Um, and this is something which it's, it's quite common because you hear this time and time again where people, um, and Raghad, like you said, some people do struggle with fasting. And, mm. and those who are not fasting around us may think, how do you fast these long fasts? Mm. Now this dear sister, the good thing is that she's realized her mistake. Yes. Um, and she wants to rectify it, but how does she go about doing that? A lot of people do know the right from wrong, yes. and they do know what needs to be done. But it's the it's the battle mm. against the self. It's the battle against uh, being thirsty um, to drink the water or not to drink the water. Um, and then, then you kind of justify uh, justify it for yourself. And you say, you know, actually, Allah doesn't really need, need my, my fasting. Yes. Um, I'll just break my fast and then I'll do istighfar later on. Uh, you know, there's lots, lots of ways to justify your actions. But when you think about it from a different perspective and think, actually, uh, fasting has been put for me for my benefit from Allah. I don't know what the benefit is. Just like when you were a child and your parents tell you to do things and they feel like that they feel like unfair, um, but actually they're for your own benefit. Mm-hmm. If you turn it around and trust that Allah has put uh, fasting or put any hardship in your way just for your own benefit, it kind of makes it that little bit easier yes. to fight against yourself mm-hmm. and say, I'm sure there's something good out of this. Yeah. Let me not drink this water. Something better is going to come yeah. along, inshallah. And medically, actually, now, it's only after so many years of us Muslims fasting that now medical research has shown what the implications on your health are. Yeah. And they've given, like, you know, a very good timeline of the first couple of days, what happens in Mahi Ramadan, when you're fasting, then the middle month, and then the end, and how medically that has such a great impact on your body Mm. so it's only now that modern science is realizing whereas this has been prescribed 1400 Mm. years ago so us as muslims have we been doing that for a long time just to add to that i think the caveat with that is to really fast with the spirit of ramadan in mind so for example you know I don't know necessarily if we'd get those medical benefits or those health benefits mm. if we are fasting during the day and then at night it's like a free-for-all feast where yes, there's like yeah. 17 different mm-hmm. dishes. Yeah. And I think 
the real benefits come when even even with the food that we do mm. eat at the end of the day we are humble even the feasts that you're talking about they're actually makro in, in islam in ramadan mm. allah always talks about not wasting always talks about uh, eating till you're full and stopping when you're you know as soon as you feel that fullness you stop yeah. i mean I, imam i just want to say something about sorry yeah. the, the letter because I, I i i didn't put my two cents into mm. it i think um first of all the sister the first point is that she recognizes her, yes. her, her, let's say, flaw. I think the first step of rectifying a mistake is the recognition of yes. what yeah. is that we're and lacking. Remorse, having that exactly, remorse. Exactly, yeah. The people will never change if they do not admit and they do mm. not recognize what it is. I think that's number one. I think another really major component is remembering Allah constantly. Yes. We humans will do something is when we feel like we're being held accountable for it, even yes. when it comes to work or when it comes to... Um, submitting an assignment or anything like that when we feel like we are being held accountable or that there's someone watching mm. we will begin to really straighten our ways and I think remembrance of Allah even Allah constantly says in the Quran remember me remember me you know remember your Lord just constantly remember remembering Allah remembering that we are being you know yeah, held accountable yeah. for every single action that we do while we're living in this earth mm. I think that's number one remembrance of Allah and I think a big major point is plan because yes. I feel like even if someone's lacking in prayer, we can say, oh, we'll pray tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, we never do it. We're going to pray. You don't know if tomorrow's going to we come. We don't even know if yeah. tomorrow's going to come, you know. Yeah. But um, so if we say, you know, tomorrow, 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 and then it, a year has gone by and we haven't, yeah. we're not praying on time. Mm. So I think having a clear plan, I mean, that's what works for me. I mm. think when I have, mm. I literally will write something down, yes. like I need to yes. do something. If I feel like I've, I, I haven't woken up for prayer yesterday, I would set an alarm. Yes. And now my daughter's my alarm. But, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, when she grows up, I wouldn't have that. Yeah. Or set but, two, um, three alarms and leave them far three, from your yeah. bed. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we have, like you said, like that, even yeah. leaving it far, yeah. we have a... If that's need what's going to get you up, yeah. Yeah. You need to have a very precise action plan. And once you have that, you will feel like once you do it for a certain number of days then it becomes ingrained it within us and yeah. it becomes a habit and then yeah. you feel like you cannot live without it yeah. so once you do something constantly you will feel like when you do it you'll mm. feel like what the why am i doing yeah. like you 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 pro reprogram your yeah. brain and your yeah. whole actions yeah. really follow it's like you said it's that constant tug of war and also knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your end goal yeah. not falling in the trap of the you know the so-called luxuries of this world um, and foreseeing um, and, and not you know looking forward to the akhirat yes. um, and, and knowing that whatever you do now even if there's not somebody in the room watching you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching yes. you so you may have not woken up for fajr and namaz nobody else will know that but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that and mm. you know that and having mm. that remorse within yourself like this dear sister she hasn't um, been able to do all the fast in Maha Ramadan. People around her may not know, yeah. but she knows that exactly. and she feels that remorse. And it could be something simple as also biting your tongue, you know, controlling your anger, yeah. because anger as well can be... Um, That's internal as well. It's, it's, it's very yeah. internal. And I often find that, you know, and, and Islam tells us if you're angry, try and swallow your anger by yeah. doing wadu or reciting mm -hmm. salwat or changing your position. If you're standing, sit down and doing something to swallow your anger. Because yes. once something has been said, you can't take it back. Yeah. Um, and once that hurt has been done, it's, it's very difficult. It's to very difficult to take it back. Yeah, exactly. Um, I feel like this Mahi Ramadan is going to be a test for everybody. We've been through the COVID of last year. Mm. Um, I myself, I know that last year I was homeschooling my children. Um, last year we had everyone at home. This year the children are in school. It's still though the same essence where things are under lockdown. We're not being able to be as free with our family. We're not able to go to the masjids and have that outlet as well. And so for me personally, I think the jihad of my inner nafs will be the jihad of trying to bite my tongue and control my anger and um, not lose my patience so mm. easily as Especially well. Especially when you're hungry. Yeah. Yep. Especially when or you're hungry. Hungry. Yeah, hungry. Yeah, exactly, mm. exactly. And that's the thing, people always focus on the food. Like if they get past, past the day and they don't eat, they're like, oh, what, another Ramadan's gone. But it's not about that. I think it's perfecting. If you're fasting but you're shouting at your wife or your husband or your kids and Children. then you're all really day. angry all the time you're not really benefiting from mm. the holy month and even if you get by, by you haven't really 
you know, you haven't really be benefited from the month. And it's not and just always, that. Yeah. Not, you haven't benefited and you've hurt others. So, yeah. you know. You yeah. I always say, if you end up, if you finish the day and the only thing you've benefited is, is, is thirst and hunger, mm. then you haven't benefited at no. all. And that's the thing. We need to incorporate. This is a, 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 a month where we need to incorporate other acts. So stuff that you really, like even um, trying to perfect our prayers. I mean, every, every prayer could be perfected in a certain way, whether we pray fast, mm. we just do a thought, we don't reflect, we have so much distractions. This is a month where we really sit down and we really look at our lives, yes. I mean, like needle pick everything and say, where can we really improve? Yeah. And this is, a, a, like, like we said at the beginning, it's about mm. um, recharging in yeah. this month. So I think it's, we can overcome this uh, jihad and nafs and, and the battle inside us yeah. if we are able to, you know, um, practice during yeah. this month. I mean, something that you said about namaz, and it's just triggered a thought inside me that, um, you know, we all pray namaz, but do we actually pray namaz? Mm. Do we pray with that full level of concentration that each namaz deserves? Mm. Um, and we are told time and time again, pray each namaz as if it's going to be your yes. last namaz yes. and live each day as if it's going to be your last day. Yes. Um, and account for your deeds in this world. So really ponder upon what you've done wrong rather than being accounted for on the day of judgment where your everything wrong that you've done is going to be an open book for yeah. you and for everyone else. And something that Zahira that you said, which um, got me thinking as well, you, you know, when you said about um, the fasting and, and we you spoke about the medical benefits mm. of fasting and whether if we eat, you know, seven meals, yeah. as if we've eaten seven meals when we break our fast. Um, in Islam, it always tells us, stop eating when you're just not completely you yeah, full. Not yeah. Exactly, just before you're completely full. And we know that Imam Ali alayhi salam, he would never eat with more than, I, I, I believe it's more than two things on the table or three things. He would never eat with, um, so say for example, if there was bread and water, he wouldn't have the third of honey mm. or milk. He would just have the two things on the water because Islam tells us lead a simple life. Yeah. And if your neighbor in the next world is suffering, feel that pain that that neighbor is yeah. suffering. So feel the pain of our dear brothers and sisters in the, um, in the, in, in the next country that they're in. Um, but I feel like this Ramadan, I want to improve on my concentration, on my namaz, because yeah. I feel like that is something that's going to bring me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Um, and I try and, I try and say that to myself every time, you know, it's not even just about slowing the namaz down for me. It's more about reflection. pondering, reflection, yeah. and actually looking at that mohar and thinking, what is that mohar made out of? Yeah. It's made out of the clay of Karbala. It's made out of the soil of um, one of the purest lands on earth. And actually looking at that and thinking, I'm going back to that. You know, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We're all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We come from earth and we'll go back to earth. Um, and I feel like that for me is one of my biggest jihads, concentration and trying to bite my tongue as well, yeah. especially with the children. And we, uh, I think we're all guilty of it. You know, mm -hmm. we all lose our patience Everyone. with children. <sighs> yeah. So what, what, what else, what other advice can we give this dear sister? Um, or is there any personal struggles that you feel that you need to work on? I mean, we're all busy moms, we're all busy ladies, but there must be something that we feel that we need to improve on. And this being the perfect 30 mm. days, what mm. better month to do it in? Yeah, I think um, reflection and prayer is something which I think all humans are currently struggling mm. with. It's because the environment and the world that we're living in is full of distractions. I mean, I think now more so than ever in, in previous years, we have more distractions than we have ever had. And um, sometimes, like we said in, in the previous episode, is we live, we live in a fast-paced life. We really don't have times where we reflect or really sit there with our own thoughts. So I think reflection and prayer is mm. something because Ramadan is centralized around mm. prayer and centralized around worship. It's really a time where we can reflect upon that. And my house has got, we've got, we're five, you know, at home. Yes. We've got three young kids that are probably running and screaming constantly. So um, definitely, I think reflection of prayer is something which every human can mm. really ponder upon. And I think even reflecting about life, 
Yes. Especially because we live now in the pandemic where so many people are losing their life. Yeah. I mean, just recently, a couple of months ago, um, a young Iraqi um, a boy, a brother, had lost his life in yes. the Iraqi community yes. to cancer. Yes. And he was I absolutely heard. healthy before. Yeah. So just because we're healthy and we think we have a lifetime to really... Um, improve upon ourselves we may not we may get god forbid have an accident and and pass away we may be diagnosed with mm -hmm. an illness we never know what's going to happen in life and i think it's once again reflecting upon life about this is this world can slip through our fingers at any time and we mm -hmm. think we're going to live on this mm -hmm. earth for eternity when we're really not and it's quite interesting because we have numerous hadith that says always um hold, hold yourself accountable mm -hmm. because we know in a day of judgment it's going to be the hardest yes. day and yes. a lot of people's sins which they do not admit in this world and do not change get exposed in the hereafter yeah. Yeah. so it's a really time where we should make the changes and um, I think once again reflection 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 out that's why I would say to mm. everyone just reflect upon yourself because no one knows themselves more than yourself mm. and you are able to make that changes yeah. Allah doesn't change or the, um, an individual unless they change themselves. Yes, so we yes. need to make those changes ourselves. I mean, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you take one step close to me and I will bring you so you know many more steps closer to me. And like you said about the dear brother who lost his life and COVID has shown us a small virus, you know, an unseen virus has been able to stop the globe at one point. Yes. All of us, it's a, it was a global issue at one and it still is. Mm. Um, so we are not it's not guaranteed that we're going to be here yeah. tomorrow so act now because it may be too late tomorrow yes. we are running out of time for the show it's again it's just flown by i just want to hear from you know zahira and yep. from ragad yourself yep. um because we only have literally a few minutes yeah. left um one thing that zahira touched on was really really important i just want to emphasize is um remember death and i think although covid has been so horrendous for mm. so many people and quite a struggle for I think most people I don't know a single person that's kind of completely yes. happy about the pandemic um, but it's such a stark reminder of death like it's staring us in the face and if this doesn't remind us of death and doesn't bring that reality to us then there are issues that need to be resolved mm. um, so number one take it's, it's a lot easier said than done but take advantage of the situation you're in although it's horrible and so many people have lost their lives there is a lesson to be learned for all of us at least one if not many yes um, the second thing I would say is the other advantage of um, the situation that we're in is a lot of the time under normal circumstances we'd go to work we'd have a social mm. life um, we'd be out and about and it's almost like we have these layers of personality in front of us and that kind of makes it a bit difficult for us to be honest with ourselves COVID and lockdown and kind of being alone with our thoughts have, has really stripped us down to our core and so it's a lot easier to see our flaws. And again, that mm. makes it a little bit Definitely. easier to tackle yeah. them as yeah. well. Yeah. Sister Ragad? I would say the biggest thing is to hold yourself accountable. Mm. Um, you know, it's like I said earlier, it's so easy to just to tell yourself or to give yourself excuses for why, why you can't do this. But sit down with yourself and speak to yourself like, any, like a, a counsellor would speak to you. Be yes. your own counsellor. Yes. And ask yourself, why? Why can't I? fast or why can't I do all my namaz and make a plan uh, to make tomorrow better mm. always sit with yourself and make tomorrow promise yourself that tomorrow is going to be a better day whether it is in deen whether it's in Islam whether it's in prayer whether it's in fasting and whether it's how you behave around others or how you behave around your children some we all do get angry at our mm. children sometimes sit with yourself and promise yourself just you and yourself promise yourself tomorrow I'm gonna be I'm gonna make it a better day. Tomorrow will be better than today. Yes, yes. I think that's the best thing that can yeah. actually have that conversation with yourself. Have a conversation and, with yourself and actually speak to your inner voice and say that I'm not gonna let Shaitan enter my yeah. soul. Yeah. I'm gonna fight this because I'm stronger than Shaitan yeah. and ultimately I want to get to that level of Jannah um, and that's where you need to strive to be. Yeah. Sadly, I mean, this is all we've had time for today. It's just flown by again. Um, I just want to end on a hadith by Imam Ali alayhi salam where he says, one who struggles against himself so as to obey God, in the eyes of God, his station is that of a pious martyr.
we all have our own jihad, we all have our inner struggles to go through, we all have our inner voices and we all have our inner shaitan to try and fight. We pray through the intercession of our beloved 14 Masumin alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us with our daily struggles in our lives. There's so many people around the world who need prayers of shifa. We pray for all those around the world who are struggling. We pray for all those around the world who need shifa. We pray for the quick reappearance and hastening of our beloved Imam Zamana. We pray for his safety. Until next time, dear viewers, iltamasid duas, please. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.